Hello and welcome everybody. This is in Blender. So in this tutorial, I am going to show you something, you know, I've been waiting to do it for some time, making any kind of Gemini and, and a mat so you know minutes you don't have to be spending too much time to make the same version of Gemini with just simple shapes uh, with difference. I just made this this one and I have made this from it and made this from it, you can see, and everything is procedurally shaded like this. Just see the this is some simple stuff, just, you know, if I hide this, you can see that we have some controls for it, uh, you know, for it, uh, I, I don't know, the mud thing in the bottom, everything is made in Blender, and so let's just get right into it, so I'm gonna close, I'm gonna open up new one, I don't wanna save this, and I just wanna enable the screencast keys for you guys, so see whatever I'm pressing for before you start you gotta make something you know you gotta have any, some kind of reference which is going to be uh in a, uh, adding a reference so i added this reference so uh in the project file so i'll be using this i just got it from the internet i don't know if it's copyrighted or something you should not use this or just take a Gemini from your house if you're ethiopian so if you're not ethiopian tough luck sorry <laughs> Just Google Gemini and you'll find it. I'll try to share this, contact the owner. So I got this, so I have to, you know, make some kind of stuff from to start with. So Gemini can be some kind of tricky because it has something that is going up like this and something that is going from here like this and something that is going up from there. But if we could, you know, tackle this first. So I'll add a new collection right here. So I'm gonna click this collection and add a new UV sphere. You know shift a you click shift a and add a uv sphere like this so um sometimes you might you know click somewhere else and you might lose the properties to change it but that is okay because you could bring it back by by pressing f9 if i press f9 uh you'll get that back so I'll just click 16 vertices should work 16 by 16 should work that is good last time i was making this i had a i had problems with making the vertices too low but this is this should work so i'll move it up like here like this and i'll scale it from the 3d cursor change the orientation point like this press this with the pivot point and change it to 3d cursor if you don't see it uh you know pie menu like this go to the preferences and enable the add-on called pie menus pie menus this one Sorry, PI Pi menus. This report Pi menus. This is a very great add-on. So while we add it, so you gotta enable some add-ons too, which I call the main one I'm using is uh, which is going to be Node Wrangler for this tutorial. Just enable this, and you're good to go. So I'll just change the pivot point to the 3D cursor. So we want to scale from here. So we just click this something that is resembling this one. So. You don't have to follow the, you know, the shape of this perfectly, you gotta, you know, you can play with it. So I'll just move the reference like this, because when we go to the orthographic mode, it doesn't matter uh, if you are in the front view or side view. So I'll go to the front view like this, so I'm pressing 1. So I'll click here, part, so part, like this. So I'll go in the front view, control plus to grow the selection, like I'm gonna hit control and plus. And I hit plus again like this and x and delete the faces like this so we get something that looks like this so i could use this like this move it in the z-axis and something like this just follow the reference but first i'm gonna go like this um i'll change the pivot points right here from um change the pivot part from the 3d cursor make it to individual origins or something make, make it a medium point that should not matter so I'll just scale it like this and move it somewhere like this. Nice. I'll move it back like this. Cool. So we wanna you know, we wanna keep this in mind. There's something that is going on like this. We wanna keep this in mind. I'll add another one right here and just move it like this. So I'll extrude it again and move it somewhere about there and scale it like this. This should be perfect. Nice. Now we have this. Don't worry about it looking ch chunky or anything. We could we'll fix that one for sure. So I'll just go right here, and we want this comment up right here. So I'll just click a vertice to see which one we should use like that. So I'll just control plus like this and grow the selection. Right click loop tools. 
So another add-on you should enable is the loop tools add-on. Go here and enable the loop tools add-on. This is a really useful add-on. You should enable it whenever you are working with this stuff. So I'll just add a loop tools, right click and circle. So you could get something like that. Perfect. So uh, now we should just go there and, you know, play with the values a little bit. So you got that. So just click this control plus to, to grow the selection. X and delete faces right there. So I'll add it like this somewhere about there. So select this edge loop by clicking Alt like that. And scale it somewhere like this to get the shape, the general shape of it. So I'll extrude like this. Don't be, you know, extruding it too much like that. So you, you just need a few vertices for wheels. Just, just use a few vertices. And I'll add another one right here. Scale it like this. Just don't, don't worry about, you know, getting the shape. Not adding as much as vertices as, as you want. So I'll add another one right here. And I'll add one right there. Perfect. So... Now we have this, we need to add something that we are going to be, you know, in a, a, you know, getting this one in the here. So I'll check this. I'll, if I go here, right click and enable the scene statistics like this, right click, scene statistics. Now I have selected eight vertices. So I'll add another edge loop right here. So we, I'll add there, there, control plus to grow the selection like this and right click, loop tools and circle. Now we have circle right there so just you know make this down right click the tools and delete delete x and delete the faces right there so grow the selection like that so boom so select this right click loop tools and bridge this right click and bridge this nice so you might be you know wondering why is this you know parts because this is the value of the normals if you go here and face orientation, you can see this face is in the wrong side. Just because, just if you look at this, the normals are there. Just think of it like this. So, if I go here, select everything, and press Shift in to recalculate the normals, we get the perfect this. So I'll add another edge loop right here. Scale it in the Z axis. Press S and Z and zero to get it in the Z axis. Right click, loop tools, and circle to get it like this. Perfect. So. We are getting there, so I'll just add another circle right there, and just move it eh, somewhere about there. This should work, but I am noticing that we are not, you know, having fun with that one. So right-click, loop tools, and circle like that. Good. We should go like this. Oh so, yeah, we should put this back. We don't even need to play with this. Um, just go right here. So let's add this form part right there. So if you want, you could click this same uh, same rule that applies here. Right, Control plus right click, loop tools and circle like this. If I do this circle and G and move it somewhere about there, like this. I think we use the wrong word. See, Control plus right click, loop tools and circle. This is much better to work with. So I'll just use that right X and delete faces right there. So we want to create something like this from here. So I'll extrude it, scale it down, rotate it, G and move it here, extrude it, and rotate, and in the x-axis, because we want this part right there to be, you know, something that looks decent. So to fix some stretchings around here, I'll add an edge loop right here because we want the vertices to be, you know, as smooth as possible if we can. So now we have this. This is good. So to make it, to give it the nice, the, the nice muddy feeling, I'll add a subdivision surface modifier right here, which is this one, and fix some geometries right there. Just, you know, scale this in the y-axis to fix this stuff. Um, Select so this, select so this, scale it in the y axis to move it just like this. Good. Now we could, you know, sleep in peace by knowing that we made our Gemini perfectly, you know, clean and it was nice topology. Everything is quads, everything follows each other. Just use this. So I'll add a solidify modifier first. So this solidify modifier will give it 
thickness, but it's not working because if you see right here, this is not working. So I'll add this on top, add the subject, so solidify my friend the top, and make this somewhere about this, like this. Now we should add some red sea edge loops, right click edge loops and something about edge loops if you like double tap G like this, double tap G and click E and flip it into the other side by clicking like this. If you double tap G like this to move it up and down and X E to you know to make it perfectly follow this part and flip it by clicking F. This is something that people don't know. And I'll add another age loop right here. Control R right there, and bam, we got this. GG, just move it somewhere about there. So I'll give it more thick enough to work with. So we'll be inside of this. Well, okay, we get, we are getting the part. So we got that. I think that is too much because the German I don't have that much. Oh, breaks is going on. So I'll go here and add. The two age loops right there. I think we should be just using one. So now we should go ahead and disable this in the so in this in the edit mode. I'll go here, select this part, right click, few tools, and circle to get it perfectly circled. So select this part again, select this, right click, loop tools, and circle to get it in the circle value that you want. So this is something that is standard while you are modeling in blender because you will use this technique so much you'll just you know adapt so it's just don't worry about it being you know me being fast and stuff you could just go ahead and see the part right here when you could well why, what, what i'm doing every time i'm clicking anything is i'm showing it in here so just go ahead and follow that if i if you think i'm going too fast because people are commenting that i do things fast Sorry for that one because I rehearsed this like four or five times and before I start the before I hit the record button so I'll just try my best to, to rush into the information. I'm just sorry. So now to get back to the point, let's fix some geometries right here, like this by moving it up. Uh, do I, did I mention I have enabled the uh, proportional editing? You enable this to get this fall off thing. So just go ahead, make it something like this. Perfect. So I'll add another edge loop right here to give it something. Disable the proportional editing by pressing O like this. I'll slow it down ish. Perfect. Nice, we, now we have the Javana ready to get textured. First, let's just go right here and fix this part right there. Cool, so now we have this, we could just go ahead and shade it. So I'll delete this, we don't need this anymore. So if I go here and show you some um, some of the references that I have, you know, uh, get from Google, so this is the one I like to texture base off because it's got the quarks and everything so I'll just show you how to texture based on this so you could you know apply it to whatever that you want so I'll just I think in a, if I see it in the German way so I'll just go right here shading mode right there to play with this so I'll select this add a new and call it Jabana. so if you are wondering what is the software it's called PureRef you could just find it anywhere so just google PureRef and download it if you want it so the first thing we should do is I like to do is I'll go here in the shading mode and change this to EV and go here and screen this and I'll change this to this HDR because I like it um, I'll just uh, go right here to give it give us more space about to work on and enable the ambient occlusion bloom subscription yeah, enable this. These are just some standard stuff you should. So I'll go here, film, so and only let it transparent. So we get some nice shading like this. So this is the usual setup that I work with while I'm texturing because I got some color information and I like this. This just you know do that. So I'll go here and make this black for the time being. This is just for visualization purpose, just don't worry about it. So um 
for the roughness i'll just decrease the roughness not too much just ever so slightly like this to get those you know reflections and i'll add a sheen but i'm not thinking about the sheen right now i'll just give it a little bit sheen just because we got some you know some white thing going on or, or top of it and your know, clear coats this should work but i don't think we should add a clear coat right now so to go with the real stuff that we are doing here we need some bumps in this one so i'll add a bump map shift a and add a bump map I think the what I'm pressing is not being viewed, so I'll just bring cast to keys and enable it right now so you can see what I'm doing. So if I go here and add a bump map, so shift A add a noise texture, go to texture and go to a uh, noise texture. <clears throat> so if I click control shift click it, uh, if you have enabled the node wrangler add-on which is here, you should enable it, no wrangler this part, no wrangler here, just enable it. So if I click Control shift click in this one, you'll see that I have this mask right there. I'll just click Control t to get this here, the mapping node, so I'll just change this to object to get this more evenly. So I'll just scale it ever so slightly to get the big dents and bumps right now. So I'll just go right there. So I'll just mm, something like this. Details give it some more detail. And move it like this. So shift A, I'll add a um, color. I'll add a converter in the color ramp right here. And make this contrasty here like this so if i plug this in the height now we could see that we get something that looks like this which is super awful we don't want something that looks like this we want something that is decent and uh, get something from it so instead of changing this value this uh, we love adding a map range value map range if i add a map range right there because we get some more, you know, finer details on it. So I'll just change this from minimum to um, minimum strength as zero at a 0.1 right here. We are not losing details like that. You know, you see this parts are just getting even closer to, you know, getting something like this should be working. Nice. So. Now we have added everything that we want to be shown here. You get the bumps in the Jevena like that. Um, cool, nice. So uh, this is just the beginning. We need something that is, you know, working for us. So we get those big dents. So I'll just shift D and duplicate this. Um, plug the vector into the vector value and control shift click this here. Now what we want to do is click this one, shift D it like this, click the back the factor in here and change it to here. So now we got this, we want to make this contrast here. So the black values are the ones which are going to be the dense. So make sure you get them just right like that. So this is the much dense that we want. So because that is going crazy right there. So I'll just go right here and Plug this into the roughness value. So just go right there and check the roughness value. Let's see what we got there. By default, it's going to be you know shiny in some parts and some parts like this. This is good, like something you could work with if you like some artistic stuff. But I don't. I want to go to the realistic one. So I'll just flip the values like this. So because we want these parts to be rough like that, these parts right here. So I'll just go right there and change this to lead gray like this something. And I'll just push this up till I get something that I like. <laughs> Perfect. So move this more to white. We are getting those values, you know, those things that are the dainty looking things. So the thing is here is you need more of these parts. So something like this should work you know you don't have to be over 
doing it because you'll get something bad uh, looking. It, this is just just fine with me. So the next thing that we are going to be adding is something that is uh, the color is you know it's not just one color it's multiple colors blending together so we will need those stuff to be working for us so I'll just add a new texture with uh, a new uh, color and mix RGB color sorry I have put it in the wrong values right there and the computer is getting stuck for some reason so I'll just plug this in here to see what we are going to be doing dealing with so now it will give us some random colors like that so we could just color it like this but we don't want to do that so control shift and click here uh, to see that we got this color value right here don't forget that we got this one and this one so now we could just go ahead and plug this in there factor now if I click on the principal BSDF control shift clicking the principal BSDF we could see that we get something that looks like this decent okay so now if I go right here and make this black ish and go to the second value which is the main part the majority part of this so um, give it some red value like this 0.3 this is good and if I bring this up like that's um, okay now we like this nice so we get this if you want you could add um so this is a tip that I'm going to be showing you uh, whenever you add it you know in a scene that you want to you know and uh something that looks like this this is called the gacha in Ethiopia so if you add it on a gacha or something um uh, you, you want you know to be affected the bottom part to be you know having some clay or something so that is something that I want to show you so so I'll just duplicate this like this right here and I'll add a new map which we are going to be working on it's a gradient texture so if I control shift like this you see that we have a gradient from here to here if I press this and control T you get a gradient same way so if i click this to object you see that we have it in the center so if i rotate the y value and press 90 on it you see that we have something that is going on from bottom to top perfect so if i plug this in here and plug this in here you see that we have something that is going from bottom to top so let's let it compile compile if I select this you see that we have something if I make this something some vibrant color you can see it better so we have something that look like that but we don't want something that looks like that shift a I'll add a converter in color ramp right here and add it in the center right there so if I put that there so if I put it there or even just play with the Z value right here move it down to the bottom like that it's not working why it's not working okay it's the x value now okay i'll just move it somewhere like that so to get some finer details right there so now we we will add some more details there because nothing is you know from being from white to brown this fast so we need something to be you know affecting that so i'll add some node that people you know usually feel are in their texturing i'll add um Converter and use the color ramp. I'll just add a math node right there. Plug this in the val. Okay, sorry. I'll add a math node and put this here. And I'll put this noise texture right there from here to here. So I'll add it right there. And from add, I'll add this to multiply. So we could add more values right there. So I'll add a multiply and add to see what we are dealing with so if I put this to something value so that is too low we could work with it so I don't think so so we are getting this value okay this value is not working for us so why not if I plus this if I hit zero on this one okay nice now we have the value that we want so if I hit multiply and add 
and hit this to zero, we see that we have something that looks like this. Perfect. So, okay, I'll just put this somewhere about there. And shift D right here. And I know I'm adding too many notes, but shift D this and control shift click this to flip the values like this. So you get only the white ones being affected like that. So whatever you add in the white value is going to be the blue thing that you want. If I click this, what is going on? Okay. So something that looks like this. If I could control shift click this. So we want the black value to be a white one. And we want this to be here this value so if I control shift click this we see that we got something that looks like wait for it this so if you are you know cooking this you get you will not get something like this but you know just play with the value sorry I don't I forgot that it loads too much so so I'll add this so instead of the white right now, so we want some noise value. So we'll use the same noise that we use for everything. You will use this value to use it in there. So I'll add uh, something like the shifty right here and move it like this in here. Plug this factor in the... This could be much faster if I could control shift click this and plug this in the blue value. So not the blue value, I'll add this in the here value. So I'll cut this one. So you, you'll use two colors, which are going to be darker and darker white. Something like that. So if I increase the saturation of this, so this should work. Nice. So if I'll use the last vector to be a multiply node because we want to multiply between these two. So I'll just control shift click this. And we got something that looks like this. So this is going to be taking time. So I'll, I'll change this to mix. Back to mix. So let's see what we got there. I don't know why it's taking too long to, you know, process this. Usually it doesn't take this long. So perfect. We have our Javana ready for anything. So if I go back and added some test renders for it. You see it works. So if I if you for the final touch of this, we'll go to the cycles render engine and go to the renderer like this and disable this and change this from here to here to get even more cooler results like this. Perfect. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Go share it, like, subscribe for this tutorial, please guys. So support some Ethiopian content created like this, as Ethiopians would say it, then I'll